Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Jim Kukrell. Hi Jim! Hey, how you doing Joanna? Hey, great to have you back on the show. Um, so in case people don't know Jim, Jim is a best-selling author and internet entrepreneur and he's well known in the indie community for the authormarketingclub.com and also for the fantastic Sell More Book Show podcast which I've recommended uh, a number of times now and everyone should be listening to. Um, and Jim's latest book is Go Direct, The Content Creator's Guide to Eliminating the Middleman and avoiding the gatekeepers. <laughs> yes, long subtitle, right? It is, but you know, it's pre it's pretty cool. Um, so we're not. Let's not go into your background because we've had you on the show several times. So let's get straight into it. Um, why do you care so much about eliminating the middleman and avoiding the gatekeepers? You know, when I was younger, um, my father said, "Don't join the army. You're not good at taking orders." And uh, he's right. I've always been very much a subversive person. I don't like when people tell me what I can and can't do, which is why I run my own business. Um, I don't like gatekeepers. I don't like people who tell me what content is good enough. I don't like middlemen who cut so much out of the transaction or, or increase fees so high that a consumer can't afford something, right? So, uh, you know, it's personal to me in a way. I just believe that everyone in the world should have the same opportunity as everyone else. And that's what the Internet does, right? And that's why I love working on the Internet. So it's not, it's not a, a vendetta against them. I personally believe that um, going direct to a consumer, whether you're selling art or music or comedy or books or whatever it is, is the better business decision. And and there's so much opportunity for you if you can if you can do it. So mm. no, I'm with you. I hate asking permission. I, it yeah. really annoys me. And in fact, I'm having my first experience with this German publisher right now. And you know, I didn't get to choose the cover. They did give me you know a choice, but I, they could have ignored me, right? <laughs> right. And it's driving me nuts. And I'm like, well, what if I want to change the price? Oh, I can't. <laughs> oh man. I don't know how to do that. I did that once and uh, I couldn't do it again. Yeah, well, and that's interesting, right? Because a lot of people listening will want a traditional deal because they haven't had one yet. Now, you had one and, yeah. it, it, and you ch choose not to do it anymore. So that's important, I think. Well, you know, it's interesting. I love the control of changing titles, prices, covers, blurbs, everything, right? You, as, you know as well as I do, Joanna, that your book is not going to, some books aren't going to sell, some books sell a lot. And, you know, the, having that book out there that has 10,000 copies printed and you messed up the title like I did with my first traditionally published book, I completely, completely messed up the title. I named it the exact opposite of what it should have been. And I can't remove it because the publisher owns it. They've printed books printed up. If it was self-published, I and I've done this before, I pull the whole thing down, change it, and guess what? Then it sells, right? Because I can fix it. So that's what I don't like about that model. One yeah, of and me too. I I changed my "How to Enjoy Your Job" to the title "Career Change," and it took off. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so um, I just straight away I've already got a question that people probably have in their head, which is that's your personality, that's my personality. What if someone's listening, going, but I don't, you know, I don't have that kind of personality? Can people learn to be entrepreneurial? You can, and I always like to. This is something I talked about in the Sell More Book Show episode that went up uh, recently. Uh, it, it's all about your pain level, right? So. You know, when you go to the doctor and, they, and something's wrong and they say, what's your pain level? Is it a 1 or is it a 10? You know, and when I had my kidney stones, uh, I looked at the nurse and I said, it's a 10, right? And I think you have to weigh that pain level. If you don't like what you're doing right now and you're not having success right now, what's your pain level of that? Is it a 5? Is it a 2? If it's only a 2, then maybe you're okay with the life that you're living in, the situation that you're having you're not being successful. If it's a 10... Then, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you really have this high pain level of what you're doing and it's not working, that's usually enough to push somebody to be an entrepreneur. However, it's not for everybody. It really isn't because there's so much uh, risk involved and there's so much 
work involved, and some people are just very happy with the, the nine to five and and that. So being an authorpreneur is the same thing. There's a lot of work involved, you know, finding the editors and the the cover designers and all that stuff. So it's not for everybody. However, I think the advantages in the author situation outweigh the disadvantages. Keeping all of your rights forever, right? Um, the pricing, being able to make more money, changes, how quick you can move. Mm-hmm. I think that definitely outweighs it. Mm. And that speed thing, oh, it's so important. Like, you know, there's so many things coming. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about Oculus Rift, this, um, you know, yeah. 3D virtual reality thing. I'm like, how, how do we get our books in Oculus Rift? Right. And people wear that, what's like a big thing and they go like this and they walk around. Yeah, yeah, but it's but it's only the beginning. It's going to change everything. And I want my arcane world in Oculus Rift. Like, how do I do that? So, And I mean, these are the things that come. We just don't know how things are going to change. So that speed is and being able to move. But anyway, let's get into your book. Um, let's define what selling direct is. What do you mean by sell direct? Well, obviously... You have two parts of the equation, right? You have gatekeepers and middlemen. Middlemen are people that have been around forever. They are the uh, – a good example is you still need middlemen, uh, like a grocery store, right? If you want to get milk for your cereal, you've got to go to the grocery store and buy it or get a cow in your backyard, right? So middlemen are still part of our society, and a lot of them are needed. Another example is uh, – PayPal or a merchant account or credit card companies. You know, the only way to truly go direct would be to walk up to someone and hand them and have them hand you cash, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so we still have a lot of middlemen that provide value, okay? So you can't eliminate all the middlemen. But then you have gatekeepers, okay? And the gatekeepers are the people who inject themselves in between you and the customer and decide whether or not your art, your content, your stories are good enough to be shown to the customer. And these are the people we can absolutely get rid of now because we can go direct to them through the power of the internet, through social media, through blogs, email marketing, and all of those things. So that's really what the whole book's about, is giving you ideas about how any content creator can can go direct to those people and make more money and have more control, and, and I believe it's the future. Mm. But we're not talking about exclusivity. So, for example, exclusively selling just on your own website. We're going like, yeah, sell through Amazon, sell through Kobo, you know, and your website, for example. Sell, sell as many places as you, as you want to sell. I mean, for example, for this book, I'm doing the launch through uh, a direct, right? But I will eventually put it on Amazon. I already have a CreateSpace print proof of, proof of the book ready to go. You know, that I'll sell eventually. As an author, you need to explore every possibility. Mm-hmm. You know this. You know every possibility where you can reach the most people who want your art, your stories, right? And and it's about if you go direct with that, you have a better chance of having more control, building a better relationship with the reader. I mean, here's the thing about Amazon. Love Amazon. Great business, right? Brings brings thousands of people into your fold. Let's your book get distributed, discovered. They don't share any of that customer information with you, do they? No. They don't give you one piece of information, right? So once that person buys that book, it's up to you to get someone to click in that book or read that book and come back to your website and get on your email list or follow you on social media. So if you're doing that directly, if you're getting someone in and you're getting them on an email list, maybe you give away a free chapter of your book or you give them an audio book for free or whatever, you get them on your email list, and now you have this opportunity to create this true fan. And and that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the things that, or one of the issues people have about this is if we sell direct, say, from our website, aren't we cannibalizing the sales from Amazon? Like, shouldn't, you know, we might lose ranking even if we make more money. Hmm. So that's a tough question, and I think people get a little bit caught up on the whole ranking thing, right? You know, for years I worked in the search engine marketing business, and everyone got is still all caught up on how well their site ranks. You know, um, I would suggest that, you know, you are in a better position with your career focusing on building a small group of true fans mm-hmm. as opposed to worrying about ranking and vanity and how everything looks on Amazon, right? Um, 
So I discuss in the book about building a true fan base, who those true fans are, and how those people can actually you can leverage those people to build in an entire career off of referrals, off of uh, donations, off of them letting ha- having them support you. So put it on Amazon as well, mm. just so you can get the uh, the ranking and just so you can get you know get it up there and give the opportunity for discoverability. But I think that selling direct and improving that you'll actually make more money. Yeah, and, I, and you're right. It's like okay, so if you wanted to, if an author wants to make five thousand dollars a month, for example, why does it matter where it comes from, and and is the ranking just as much an ego thing as having your book in a physical bookstore? Yeah, you know, there is a lot. I mean, the whole traditionally published for self-published thing. I hate to keep coming back to it, but there is a whole romanticism around traditional publishing that is fading. But there still exists, you know. The the I had it when I had my first book done with the publisher. I you know I had this romantic thing where I'd walk into a, a, a Barnes and Noble and my books would be laid out in front, and I and I thought, wow, this is really cool. But I quickly realized that that's not what this is all about. You know, that was nice to see, hmm. but it didn't mean that I sold a lot of books. You know, it's so. I think you're you're right. I mean, it's the the traditional versus self publishing thing, and the and the the romantic thing about having your books out there. But at the end of the day, this is about business, right? If you're writing a book just because you want to write a book and it makes you feel better about yourself, then that's fine. But at the end of the day, I think most of us are in this to make sales of our books and build fans. You know, if you write nonfiction, I write these books because I want to help people. I really do. I mean. I really want to help people find success. I'm a teacher at heart. And fiction authors, I believe, write the books because they want people to hear their wonderful stories that they have. And it it feels good when you get up on stage or you give somebody a book or a story and and they applaud or they cry or they laugh. And and that makes you feel good, right? Don't you think? Mm. Yeah. And... and yeah, I guess, and also we can't help it half the time. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, I've got a list on my wall of nine books that I want to write. It, the ideas do not stop. It's just the time to actually do it. But I want to bring up one other thing. I hate to mention the Hachette Amazon discussion, but that's the reason I emailed you and said, I want to talk about this. And you said, oh, I'm actually writing a book about it. Because when I heard about the Amazon Hachette thing, you know, the, the sort of w- what's happening with contractuals, my thought was, this is about power. Now, if Hachette had the email list, they wouldn't need Amazon. They could just say, well, screw you, we'll take all our books, sell them direct. But they can't because Amazon has the power. And I thought, oh dear, I don't want to end up in that situation in 10 years' time. I don't want to wake up one day and go, I can't make any money if they turn me off. So for me, this is about power. We have to be able to make a living even if Amazon crumbles, Kobo crumbles, iBooks crumbles. This is the only way, right? This is the way to do it, and you need to understand exactly what you just said. Building a business model off of someone else's platform Mm. eventually is going to be a recipe for disaster, and that's exactly what happened to the Hachette people, right? Going through that publisher and having to play by that publisher's argument with Amazon Mm. is costing them a lot of money. And you need to, for example, I talk about in the book, about a woman who started a great Facebook group called uh, What to Read After 50 Shades of Grey. And she got up to like 80,000 likes on the page. And it was great. And she would post books every single day. Uh, And the problem was Facebook changed the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So instead of everyone seeing her post, 1% of 80,000 people would see the post. And, you know, your business goes from here to here with one change on someone else's platform. So what she's doing now is she's aggressively driving people into an email list through the Facebook page and sending them emails directly. No middleman, no gatekeeper in the middle, right? So now the business is slowly growing. And, and the value of having that, you know, Louis C.K. is another example we talk about in the book. You know, Louis C.K. has uh, tons of Facebook fans, Twitter followers, and an email list. And normally he wanted to do a comedy special. He didn't want to do it through the normal channels with an agent, a publicist, and all that stuff. He said, I'm going to try something. And he went direct to his fans. And he put a PayPal link up. And he said, I'm going to do a comedy special, and it's five bucks, and you can have access to it. And he did a, um, $770,000 in 48 hours. Then he did it again, and he did over $4.5 million direct. 
right? Without all these middlemen and gatekeepers in the middle and ticket brokers and all these people. So uh, it's definitely a model that anyone can do, and it makes a lot of sense. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to have that relationship with your fans, the people that like what you do? Yeah, and I mean, let's put this in perspective, though. Um, how long has Louis C.K. been a comedian? For 25 years. Yeah, so this is another thing that's really important. So to people listening are going, well, I, ha you know, I have nobody. I have no email list. This just takes time, right? This takes years to build. We're not talking about doing this tomorrow. This is, well, we are starting tomorrow, but it takes time. You're talking about the building a platform piece of it, right? Mm. The building a platform, getting those true fans, right? And the first step to that is creating something remarkable, whether it's comedy, art, music, books, whatever. You have to create really amazing stuff. Otherwise, no one's going to become a true fan of yours. So, But it's easier than ever nowadays because you have the power of social media and the internet to be able to get your content out to people. So we, this is something else we talk about in the book. Amanda Palmer who did the Kickstarter campaign for the music. And one of the, the points that she talks about in her TED Talk is – what if we asked, what if we gave people the opportunity to let them support us, right? What if we changed the model instead of, hey, here's how something we can sell you. Here's our content. Here's our music. Here's our books. Did you like it? Oh, you did? Okay. Well, let's virtually kind of pass the hat around, right? So I guess how can you let people pay for your books? How can you let people pay for your music? And I think this is the new model that we're going through now and experimenting with and makes a lot of sense. And then you build those true fans as you give away your content. And they're like, wow, that was helpful. You know, I, I've given away 60,000 copies of my books in the last three to four years. Given away. Hmm. And those people email me and call me and offer me to speak and do consulting jobs and things like that and join my membership sites and all that stuff. All for me giving my content away. Mm. Um, what is ironic, of course, is Amanda Palmer then signed a book deal with Hachette. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so crazily, her book, which is about asking the power of the ask or something like that, has been uh, unavailable for pre-order because of this whole thing. So, th and that's crazy. Why didn't she just ask her fans? <laughs> you know, I think you know what happens is again you get popular. And somebody comes in the door and they got that big wallet yeah. and they, they go, you know, you know you would do it if somebody came in the door. Like Hillary Clinton, right? She just had a book that was released through Simon & Schuster, I believe. And she got a $14 million, million. <laughs> not in advance, a bonus. So she didn't have to earn out on it, right? So which means just $14 million free and clear, I believe, if I read the article correctly. And they've only sold 160,000 books. Yeah, I've heard they're making a massive loss on that. That is, you know. I will take that deal right now. <laughs> You're right. No, and of course, we're not saying don't take these deals. We're just saying at the same time as taking these deals, make sure you've got an email list sign up if someone's, even if someone pays you that money. Here's another example, J.K. Rowling, okay? J.K. Rowling never gave up the e-book rights to her Harry Potter books. They were never sold before. And she had so much power at the end of her contract, she said, you know what, I'm not going to sell them to you, the publisher, anymore. She created a website called Pottermore.com, and she said, if you want my e-books, which all of her millions of true fans did, you have to come to my website and register. Mm -hmm. And that's how she's going to turn $300 million into $600 million yeah. because of having the power of those people. And she can now go direct. She doesn't have to go through Amazon or a publisher or anything. No, so it's very and, um, and, of course, we're talking big names here, but uh, I am not a multimillionaire. I'm not even a millionaire. Um, and I am doing this on a very small scale. Yeah. And as are you on a, you know, obviously you're doing well, Jim. Awesome. But <laughs> you know, we're doing this on a small scale. So let's get into practicalities. If people want to sell a book from their website, what services are available that you would recommend? Yeah, in the book, I talk about a bunch of different things you can do to publish content, whether it's your book or music or art or whatever it is. In terms of book sales, I'm doing my pre-order, which is now after you tape, after you're watching this, is live now through a website called Gumroad, which is a, a very it's a middleman, right? They process a transaction and deliver the digital file to the person, and I'm doing it through them, um, and they take five percent 
of of whatever somebody pays, right? Um, another one that uh, you and I both love is called Cells, which is an S C L Z. Yeah. So that that's another great one, and there are plenty of other ways to to, to go out there and put your book out there. Um, on the artist side, you've got Bandcamp, right, where you can put your music up, and if people like it, they're able to to let you know give you support for it. So there's a lot of options out there. I would ask people who are rejecting this concept of giving your music away or your books or whatever to say, if you're not having success now, if you're not making any sales now, why not? Mm. Why not try it? Why not put your book out there in a format and using one of these tools and see what happens? Yeah, and the other thing I was interesting. There was um, an article in Forbes recently um, that you know how your next door is changing, your next door neighbor is 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 changing commerce, and it was about the rise of the indie movement um, and this kind of the preference. There is eventually in this indie way a preference for buying indie. So some people don't want to buy from Amazon or from iBooks or whatever. They want to buy from the artist. You know how how long do you? think it's going to take before that attitude becomes mainstream in books I, I think it's happening already I think it, I don't care if you're an author or a chef if somebody's a fan of your work whether you create chicken recipes or whatever kind of cuisine you create if someone's a fan they want access to you they want authenticity from you they want you to say here are the types of pot, pots and pans I use, or here's what I use to write my books. They want, they want everything, and that's where we are at in the world right now. They don't want that middleman or gatekeeper in the middle, mm-hmm. right? Like Amanda Palmer talks about that. Celebrity isn't what it used to be, right? Celebrity is used to be where you have these famous people, and then you'd have this big, giant wall between you and the famous people, and you were on the other side of the wall, your fans, right? And there was these people in the middle that kind of controlled the whole thing. It doesn't exist like that anymore. When even if you're only famous to a thousand people or a hundred people, those people want you, and they want everything from you in terms of your thoughts, your fears, what you're doing, what you ate for breakfast. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, they don't like that because they like the old way. Oh, I just want to be famous, and you know. But that's not the new way of doing things. That's not what people expect now. People expect to have access to you. They expect to be part of your life and hear what you're doing. So I would argue to authors, let them in. Let people in. Use the tools that we have today, social media tools and videos and and everything you can to let those people into your lives and watch as they become true fans and then watch as your career goes, your sales grow. Because what does a true fan do? They tell everyone, right? Right. They say, oh my gosh, this is the best book I ever read when you have a true fan. Yeah, and, and it's also important to remember that we're not aiming for everyone. Like a lot of people won't like you, a lot of people don't like me. Um, th- those aren't, I mean, and they're not listening. <laughs> right. exactly. They're not true fans, right? They wouldn't have gotten this far. Exactly, which is, which is, and that's great, and that's what people need to remember. You know, too many people are like, oh, I think everyone should read my book. <laughs> no. No, exactly. And not everyone will be a true fan. Um, so that's really important. I also wanted to ask you, like, because w- one thing you're doing and people are asking me about, people are like, where's the audio book of, your, of my book, How to Market a Book? They're like, I want to hear you talk about it. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm not sure. But you're recording this yourself, aren't you, and selling the audio book as well directly, not through Audible. Yeah, so this is a really cool thing you can do direct. And, and one of the things that I'm doing, when you order my book direct through me, you'll get the PDF version, and you'll also get the MP3 file, which I've just recorded on my own through Audacity. Right? I've got the stand-up desk here. I, I turn the thing on, and I just open the book you know, and read the book. You know, and it, it, People get so caught up in this. It has to be this the most amazing, perfect production of mm-hmm. things. People, again... Your fans don't want that. Your fans want you to be halfway you know, into a sentence and you mess up a word and you just laugh and you say, sorry, that was the wrong word, and you keep going, right? They don't want this post-production, beautiful world that's kind of an advertisement that used to exist. I mean, mm-hmm. YouTube's the best example of this. Mm-hmm. Is YouTube changed everything. You know, before YouTube, you'd have a video production. If people wanted to see these beautiful, highly produced videos. And now what they want is they want someone to stick a camera in their face and just talk. 
Yeah. Right? Because it's expectations. So um, I believe that that's the, the audio is real simple to do. You just read it yourself mm. and, and sell it direct. Yeah. And, and also, I really like the idea because um, one of the things you have to do, you know, I have my fiction pro professionally done with ACX and Audible. But for yeah. my nonfiction, I want to read a chapter and then I want to talk a bit about what I just read, you know, and say, well, here's, you know, and here's a bit of an extra, like, a, you know, make it more of an, uh, an extra content than just the basic read. Well, you know what's cool about this is I've done this once before for one of my other books. What's cool is I can do a little private intro with some music yeah. ahead of time and then read the book. And it's in my own voice. Now, I write like I talk. Mm. I'm a, my, my nonfiction is I write like I talk, so it's very easy for me to read my books. And you're exactly right, adding that little personal thing into that. Um, and uh, it's selling direct by adding files on. You could say, hey, I'm going to give you this bonus and this and this. And all the whole time you're building your email list. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's why um, cells and Gumroad and things are important. So when people are making a decision on which one to use, make sure it's got the email integration. And as you said, you've got a whole list in your book. Um, but yeah, so just mention some of the other models because, for example, I'm still, I still have a real issue with crowdfunding. I, I, I think that you really do have to have a platform before you go anywhere near it. So talk a bit about that as an example. Well, crowdfunding, like Amanda Palmer did with the, the music, you know, crowdfunding can be tough. I did a crowdfunding campaign for my business around a lifestyle books, and I raised over $35,000 before I even wrote the books. Mm -hmm. um, crowdfunding is, can be difficult if you don't have a platform and if you don't have a really good story to tell, um, and especially for books. I think that's going to be a tough concept to move forward with in the future for authors. However, the one mile I do want to talk about is pay what you want. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I do at GoDirectBook.com, which is you can come get the book completely free. Or you can put in what you think it's worth to you, right? And I suggest the price of $1.99 or $2.99, whatever it is at the moment. And people can get it free, put zero in and download it and get the MP3 file. Or they can put in what they want to pay, hmm. right? Now, the psychology behind this is good. You know, when I'm early numbers, I've been running. It's about you know the av average person who does contribute contributes the suggested amount, hmm. right? And then uh, right now, I'm over fifty percent of the people are contributing money, and the rest aren't. So that's fine for me. But what happens is they get on my email list a week after they download the book for free. They get an email that says, "Hey, uh, did you like it? You got it for free." Well, guess what? If it was valuable to you, all you have to do is click this button right now, hmm. and you, you can donate as much as you would like to what you thought the value of the book was. So the pay-what-you-want model is strategic. Again, how can you let people support you, right? You know, the, the, we haven't even talked about patronage yet. You know, how, how do you let people support you in a way that they, they want to? Mm. Well, let, let's talk about uh, Patreon or Patreon, as yes. you would call it. Yeah, Patreon, uh, you know, the whole concept of patrons goes back thousands and thousands of years, right? You know, Michelangelo had a patron, mm. right? This is how artists, musicians, Shakespeare had a patron, the Queen of England. We would not have the Shakespeare works that we have today if it wasn't for the Queen of England. We would not have... Um, the Sistine Chapel, if it wasn't for uh, the, 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 the patron. Yeah, well, the, well here's the thing. The, the Pope was the, the guy, uh, uh, Michelangelo, right? He, he, well, he was, wasn't the Pope. He was. <laughs> no, he had a, he, his patron was this very wealthy person who had two sons, and he grew up with the two sons who later became popes. Mm, the Borgias, How, I think. Yeah, and how do you think that he got the contract to do that ceiling? Because he grew up with a, you know, so pa patrons are a very important part of the artist storytelling community, and we've gotten away from it. We've gotten into this transaction based, hard sticker price world hmm. with e commerce, right? In the past, you had to have a patron if you wanted to be an artist. So now you have sites like patreon.com, which Jack Conte started from the band Pomplamoose, and Basically, you could go out and say, hey, 
I'm going to create comic books every month, or I'm going to create a, a new ebook every month, or I'm going to create a new music track every month. And people can say, I'd love to be your patron of that. I will give you a dollar every time you release something new. Now, when you think about it, though, if you have a thousand people giving you five dollars every time you release a new video or a new ebook, you're making a lot of money. So I guess the whole entire concept of patronage is letting people support you, mm. right? True fans. These people want to support you. So let them be your patrons and use it in a crowdsourcing type of way. It doesn't have to be one wealthy patron who gave you a stipend to do your art for the next 30 years. You could have a thousand people, 50 people, each giving you a little bit of money mm. that can help support you. And I believe that every artist and content creator should be trying this because it's, it's an amazingly powerful movement. Yeah, and it's funny, I've been thinking about, I've, I've been thinking about that for the podcast because I'm coming to the end of a sponsorship and, um, you know, the podcast takes a lot of work, as you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hours of time and, and, you know, I've been wondering about doing that, just saying, you know, if you enjoy the show, if you feel like, you know, you get value out of it, uh, leave a, but do we call that a donation then? Uh, you know, it, that is a oh. kind of donation. So let's talk about the semantics of the wording. A donation is typically what you would give in expectation for nothing back. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You give a donation to a charity, mm -hmm. right? You're donating your time, your money. This is uh, in crowdfunding terms, in terms of going direct and pay what you want. You, you're suggesting that people support you. Mm -hmm. You need to use words like support. Don't ask for handouts. Yeah. Say, it's my content. I'm giving it to you. If you would like to support me and the work that I do, mm. then you can go here. And it's a it's a little psychological switch in mm. a person's head when they hear you can support me as opposed to you can donate to me. Yeah, no, you're right. Support the podcast, you know, continuing and yeah. Now, see, it's so funny you're saying that because I do a podcast as well, and and you know, this is one of the concepts. You know, we're not. Uh, making money off the podcast. Mm. We do it because we love it. But it would be great to have a sponsor, right? Mm. And it would be great to be able to deliver that podcast week after week after week in the same format as you. I think if you did that, if you used a site like Patreon or you just did it some other way mm. and, and you, had, you have so many fans who love to listen to the podcast, would 2,000 people give you $1 yeah. every time you do a podcast? In, and, and that's the thing, you know, because I've now got transcripts and I've got, you know, the, and the time that there is an, an amount I would want to make to cover just to cover cost, let alone anything else. And, and it's uh, it is. An, I have been thinking about this, but let's talk about the psychology of I'm very British. Um, and even though I, I want to talk about money. I, it is a very difficult thing for many people to even be thinking about these things. And, you know, we talked about, well, just the, the ask, and that's what Amanda Palmer's book is, is about. How can we change this reticence? Uh, you know, how can we feel better about this? How can we as authors or the readers? The authors. How can we feel, like, or how can, okay, so me specifically, how can I feel better about saying, how about you support my podcast? <laughs> yeah, you know, th this is a tough thing, you know, because we've been, we've been uh, told and taught that be it's it's like begging, right? Mm, mm, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But you have to change your mindset, right? Mm. This is things we've been talking about, like what Amanda Palmer, Palmer says in her video, is how can I let people support me? Mm. You know, I fall off the stage and people catch me. Mm. Isn't that what this is really all about? Yeah. It's about someone consuming what I have and letting those people be part. I mean, you have to change your mindset. The customer has to change their mindset from thinking about a hard sticker price and the con content creator, the author or musician needs to change their mindset from I'm trying to sell something to somebody. Instead, I'm trying to give my content to you in a way that you will enjoy it. And that's originally what you know, musicians and content creators and script writers and everything did back in the day before everything was money, 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 right? Mm. You know, Shakespeare wasn't writing it. You know, Amadeus, Mozart did it for, for money, right? It's pretty well documented. But a lot of the people just did it because they loved to do it and then they, they were earning their support. So let's get back to that. And I think just the mindset change. Mm. And I'll ask you this, and I'm not saying this to you, Joanna, I'm saying this to people 
who aren't having success right now with their books. If you're not having success right now, maybe the change you need is to adopt this mindset and go out to people directly and say, you know what, here's my content. Here are my stories. What did you think? And if you enjoyed it, you could contribute to me. Not give me money. You could support me. Yeah. And it's interesting because I just wrote down, like, when I thought, why am I having problem? I The problem I have is it being independent. And that's so crazy because that's what we're talking about. I mean, I don't, I've never liked asking for money. Like, even my mum, like, I would never even ask my mum for money. I had a job at, like, 13 and, you know, earned the money that I needed to do to, you know, for stuff. And I've always felt that way. And, and what you, but what you're saying actually is to be independent we need to develop that kind of trust um and like you say amanda jumping off the stage the, that crowd surfing thing terrifies me absolutely <laughs> terrifies me maybe it's an introvert thing but but you're right it's you know will will anyone catch me and yeah i mean this is this is like an emotional risk though isn't it and you know it's like what if i put myself out there and nobody nobody does catch me and i hit the floor <laughs> what if you what if you spent the next three years busting your butt going the traditional way, self-publishing way, do all the things everyone told you and it got you nowhere, right? Mm. You know, what if, you know, I think it's going to depend on, on who your true fans are and if you've really connected with them or not. This will not work for people who create content that's not amazing. Mm. You, know, you and I will both agree with that. If you're not writing amazing things, then it's not going to work for you because no one's a fan of junk. No. People are fans of things that really entertain them or solve their problems. So if you're not creating something amazing, this will never work for anyone, which, mm -hmm. which is why it's the level playing field. Only the people who really are producing something that people want are going to be the ones who are going to be able to do this. Yeah, and also a personal relationship in some way. So, for example, um, you know, our, our friends on the self-publishing podcast, um, I, I jumped in on their Kickstarter and helped fund that, even though I haven't even looked at what they've been doing because I've been so busy, right? But I wanted to be involved. And, you know, sometimes it's about joining a, a movement or, or something, I guess. Well, it is all part of it. I mean, human nature is all about wanting to be part of communities, be part of uh, uh, you know, the whole celebrity relationship that we were talking about before is what, if, what has everybody always wanted? They wanted to be part of those people's lives. That's why social media and celebrities is, is so amazing because they can see what Brad Pitt had for breakfast when you post a picture of a bagel, right? <laughs> you know, and that means a lot to people. You know, if you're an author, you know, why aren't you doing those types of things? Why aren't you saying, you know, I'm writing chapter two of the next book of, of this series? And here I am in Amsterdam, and here's where I'm sitting on a bench writing it. You know, mm. that's just interesting letting people be part of your life. And unfortunately, that's I, what I believe it's going to take in the future to mm. go direct and to build fans. But the people that do it are going to see the rewards big time. Mm. Um, I think we do have to take some risks, um, you know, and, and like, you know, and do stuff for free first. I totally agree with you. Let's talk about the Selma Book Show because um, yeah. that, you know, that's a great example. It's a really, it's a great show. Just explain to people what the format is of, of that show. Yeah, we do a, a quick news show where we cover the top five news items in the world of uh, publishing, self-publishing every week. And we keep the show less than 40 minutes every week. You know, sometimes podcasts that go longer, they're tough to keep your attention span. And we just wanted to do something in a format that was more kind of NPR-ish where we got in and, and just said, hey, here's the news. Here are the tools that we found this week. Here are the strategies we found. Enjoy this quick big, big bing, bang, boom, and, and get out. And so far, we're on episode 15 at the time of this taping, and uh, we're really enjoying doing it. Brian's a great partner. Yeah, and I think what uh, I like is I get an idea pretty much every show, um, and I think I'm on top of marketing. Um, <laughs> so it's great. And, and I, one of the questions people who are listening probably have is, how do I build that fan base? And I'm suggesting they listen to the show um, because there are ideas there every week, right? Every week. And you know what? Again, this is expanding my fan base and Brian's fan base because – all we're doing is creating content that people really enjoy. Mm. It's a, a podcast form. There's no re I, I love talking about my buddy Jay Thorne, 
who's a top five Amazon horror writer. And I love talking about him because he's doing all the things that everyone should be doing in their genre. Mm. You know, Jay, Jay is one of the top horror writers on Amazon behind uh, Kuntz and King, mm. right? You know what else he's doing? He created the Horror Writers Podcast. And so now he's leveraging his authority as a horror writer inside the horror writer community. And he's got, you know, so why couldn't you do that? If you write about architecture or furniture or artwork or whatever, why can't you go out and just create a podcast and build your authority and become better known in your circles? It's going to open doors for you to other people who are influencers in your industry. It's going to get you new readers. It's going to get you new listeners. So the power of what we have today with the Internet and the, how cheap it is to do it really is no excuse other than you saying, I just don't have the time or I don't want to figure it out. Hmm. And that, you don't yeah. shoot fans by just sitting back and, and doing nothing. No, exactly. And the people who are super famous, I've just come out from uh, Thriller Fest. Um, and these guys, most of these people who are, who are now in their 60s, they've been writing for 30, 40 years and have got to where they are because they've been consistent for years and years. And it's, it's so impressive to me and so inspiring to see where time and effort can actually get you so you know I, I think people listening who feel like they don't have anything right now have a, an email list of one or you know their mum it just takes time and effort and consistency right yeah time and effort you know you'll never hear me say there's a get rich quick overnight because there's not no. you know one out of 10 million people will win the lottery or 100 million people will win the lottery and the rest of the people are born into money or whatever it is the rest of us you got to get to work Mm. And again, go back to that pain level. How bad do you want it? Mm. How bad do you want to be successful with the books that you're out there? Well, guess what? Start writing more books. Start writing better books. Start spending more time learning about marketing of your books. Everything that you know, you and I, the people that we interact with, Joanna, with the people who we see are successful, have done and continue to do so. They're not sitting back and just letting, expecting it all just to happen. They're a, they're out there trying new things all the time. Mm. Like pay what you want model and going direct. Yeah, exactly. So this has been brilliant, Jim. Tell people where they can find you and the book and all your other stuff. Uh, uh, you can grab a copy of the digital book and the MP3 book. Just go to godirectbook.com. And uh, you can also find it on Amazon probably by this point. You can order the print copy uh, or the digital version there if you want. But if you go to go direct book. You're going to get the MP3 with it as well, you know, and you can get it for free, by the way, or you can pay what you want. So it's totally up to you. Uh, and then, of course, jimcucrell.com, where you can find out all of my other books. So fantastic! And at the sellmorebookshow.com. Yes, sellmore. I've got too many links. Authormarketingclub.com, <laughs> sellmorebookshow.com. Um, again, I'm in the business of creating content and, and trying to give it away and help people. I love mm -hmm. teaching people. So Author Marketing Club has a free membership. We have a paid one as well if you want it. Some more book show is a free one. Maybe we'll do a support us model like you're going to try down the road. Um, go direct books free, right? This is all about helping people. And when you start thinking about creating content from that aspect, mm -hmm. I think you'll have a much better uh, relationship with your fans that you're trying to build. And same thing on the fiction side entertaining people and letting people be part of your life and I think going direct will help you do that and I'm meant to be finishing now but I just had a thought because you had you like you say you have so many of these sites right you are a serial entrepreneur internet guy I know you've been going for for a long time and, and I talked about what if I jump off the stage and nobody's there and I fall flat how many of your websites have failed Jim how, how many are a success and how oh, many, like, like well, what yeah. is your failure rate for going splat Failure rate is 95 percent. <laughs> um, I create uh, projects that I, I, I did a crowdfunding thing called Gym for Life a couple years ago. It was a huge failure. <laughs> I had a really great website idea called Awesome Million years ago where you got this online certificate and we made you awesome. And I spent a lot of money on that. It was a huge failure. I started a couple blog network, ad networks. I have failed 95 percent more times than I have succeeded. But the pain level for me of having to work for someone else yeah. and not have my own success is a 10. Yeah. So therefore, I can deal with being a failure. I just slough it off my shoulder. I get back up. 
and I write something new. And hopefully, you know, people think that I've sold millions of books. I haven't. The, the, the genre that I write in is tiny. Yeah. Marketing, self-help, right? I've sold a, a lot of books, but nowhere near to make a living career off of, right? I still don't have a book that got to the top of a New York Times bestseller list or this or that or whatever because my genre is too small. And who knows? Maybe this one will. Maybe this one's going to be the one. Maybe the next one I write. But keep trying. Mm. That's the message, right? Yeah, and I fa- just you know I failed loads as well. Like the, the creative pen was my third blog, and I've had a oh. couple of others, you know. And I've I've had four businesses that failed miserably, lost me a lot of money. I lost a lot of money too, you know, in various. Ah. I ran a scuba diving business for God's sake. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it's important for people to know that, you know, we, we're still on the road, right? We're still trying stuff. We're still jumping off the stage. <laughs> still keep trying. Put your stuff out there. Create remarkable content that helps people or solves their problems or entertains them. And good things will happen for you eventually. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your time, Jim. That was brilliant. Thank you very much, Joanna. It's always great speaking with you. And uh, hopefully someday we'll get to catch up in person.